All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Lannis, and uh, today I'll be talking a little bit about SQLize. In particular, I'll be talking about um, SQLize's ability to perform what we'll call database migrations. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more in depth uh, in just a second about what exactly a migration is and how it's performed. But first, I'd like to tell you a little bit about a problem I had recently. So over the last couple of weeks, um, I've been working a little bit on building a small gardening application. The goal of the app is to uh, use crop-specific data to help a gardener plan and maintain his garden. Uh, so as I started building this app, you know, went through the normal workflow of planning my database schema, uh, building some dummy data, and then seeding my database. Quickly ran into a couple problems, however. Um, first problem, there's really no uh, central repository for uh, crop-specific data. So I had to go around the web uh, doing a little scraping um, from various uh, sources to try to consolidate and synthesize some data. Again, quickly realized, though, that uh, a lot of crop data uh, can be inconsistent, it's incomplete, different data types, so on and so forth. So I eventually resigned myself to, uh, to having to manually enter some crop data into my database uh, to make sure my uh, sort of a, a beginning data set of crop data uh, could be complete. As soon as I did this, of course, uh, I realized that if I ever I wanted to change my database, uh, if I wanted to change data types, if I wanted to add columns to my schema, if I wanted to add uh, data uh, 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 other models to my schema, uh, you know, we'd have to run through the uh, DB sync force true, and I'd have to re-manually enter uh, all of this data that I uh, spent a lot of time putting into my database. And so I realized quickly that I was in, in, a, in a little bit of a pickle. Um, I realized also probably could have gone, uh, solved this problem in a couple different ways, but I uh, sort of acknowledged to myself that as soon as I wanted to confront this problem, I had the opportunity to learn something new. Uh, and this is one of the things I learned. I, I quickly came to a realization. The realization was in, in our junior phase, uh, we sort of took our great databases for granted. Sometimes quite literally. Sometimes uh, our databases were given to us. Our schemas were defined for us. Sometimes we were given uh, dummy data to seed our database. Uh, but it comes with some assumptions, and it's important to acknowledge those assumptions. Specifically, it, it assumes that we know what our data is supposed to look like from the get-go. Uh, it assumes that we have a clear conception of what our data should be shaped. Uh, it assumes that our, our projects don't change over time and features uh, aren't added. But of course, uh, that's not necessarily the case all the time. It also assumes that uh, you, you, you never, or you're okay with uh, dropping data uh, upon changing your database schema. In my case, that wasn't okay. Um, and of course, uh, here's the thing. Data change over time. Sometimes uh, features get added to our apps. Sometimes we don't fully have a, a, an understanding or appreciation of what our data should look like. These are the problems. This spe specific problem uh, is uh, the problem that I faced, and it's a problem that database migrations can help to solve. It helps solve these problems in development databases and also in production level databases. So as, a, as a, uh, an app is in production, uh, database migrations allow developers uh, to uh, change their database schema without necessarily having to drop, uh, drop data or destroy data. It just so happens that SQLize comes with some tools built in, uh, to, built in to allow us to alter our database without having to destroy data. And so I went about uh, learning a little bit about how to change my database schema without having to drop data. Uh, so for the rest of my talk today, I'd like to tell you a little bit about how to go about and get up and running with uh, SQLize's migration tools. Um, what's great about SQLize's migration tools is it comes with a command line interface. Um, and uh, let's see here. It allows us to work uh, within JavaScript, changing our database so that we try to usually try to avoid uh, writing our uh, raw SQL queries uh, to go ahead and change our database. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing that you'll want to do if, you want, if you're interested in using uh, uh, SQLize's migration tools is to install uh, the uh, SQLize command line interface package. You'll do so globally uh, from your command line, 
And then right away inside your projects directory, uh, you're going to want to create an RC file. In this case, I've called it a SQLize RC file. Um, and in this case, what SQLize is going to want to do uh, when you run a migration, or when you initialize migration, I should say, is it will uh, try to go ahead and create a few directories. It'll start creating sort of a directory structure for you if you don't already have one. Specifically, it's going to want to create a migrations path uh, where your migrations will live in your project. It'll go ahead and want to know where your models path is in your, uh, in your, in your project. And it will want to know where to place a configuration uh, directory or, and specifically a, a JSON file inside that configuration directory. SQLize has its own opinions about where to place those. Um, but if you already have a directory structure set up, you can tell SQLize where to go ahead and find those. After you've installed, you'll initialize a SQLize project. Uh, and in this case, going back to your command line, you'll run SQLize init. And it, again, it will either go ahead and create those directories uh, inside your project for you, or it'll go ahead and find them uh, and place a few files. Specifically, what's going to happen is it's going to create that configuration directory with a JSON file. It'll look for or, find or create a migrations directory, a models directory, It'll also even create another directory called seeders. Uh, it's a great, uh, uh, seeding your database is another whole topic uh, that we won't get into today. Um, but it's important to realize that SQLize allows you uh, tools uh, to go ahead and do that as well. Um, once you have uh, your project initialized, you'll want to go into that JSON file and configure that a little bit. Uh, specifically, you're going to tell SQLize where to find your database on your machine. Uh, you'll tell it uh, the host name, a port name possibly, um, your username that defaults to Postgres, and specifically uh, which dialect of SQL you're using. And of course, in our cases, um, that tends to be Postgres. What I've just described right now are the steps that any developer would take uh, when they are uh, interested in making a migration. But we haven't made any migrations just yet. So in, in just a second, uh, we will go ahead and uh, build our first migration. When you're interested in doing that, uh, when you're ready to, uh, to uh, create a, a new migration, you'll go back to your command line and run the command SQLize Migration Create. You'll uh, pass in the name flag and name your migration. Uh, in this case, I named it Name the Migration. Uh, what that will do, what SQLize will do, is it will generate a new file in your migrations path. That file is a pretty simple one. Uh, if you take a look uh, at the center of our page, um, the file contains an object. And the object itself has two functions, an up function and a down function. Uh, the up function is the function that will get called when you run your migration. It's the function that describes how you want to change your database from an older state to a newer state, from an older version to a newer version. Uh, and the down function gets called if you're interested in undoing the change to your database. So it takes it from uh, a newer state to an older state, or, or a newer version to an older version. And this is really the power of SQLized migrations. It allows developers to version their databases, to describe or articulate different versions of their database, different states of their database. In, in some ways, uh, it'll, it's parallel to how developers use Git to version their code base. That's a really powerful uh, idea because now our databases can, uh, can have versions that mirror uh, the state of their code base. You can even run scripts, uh, for example, in your package.json uh, that depending on the version of your code base, your database will automatically uh, reflect that state. I also want to point your attention to the two objects passed into these functions. The first object is a query interface object. Uh, and that's the object that has uh, various methods that literally do the changing of your database. If you wanted to add a column, you'd call query interface dot add column. If you wanted to remove that column, you'd call remove column. If you wanted to add a new table or change the name of a table or change the name of a column, you could go ahead and do that off of the query interface object. The SQLize object is a second parameter. That's the object that we're familiar with. That's the object that has the data types associated with it when we define our models uh, normally. When you're ready to run your migration, you'll go back to your command line and run SQLize DB migrate. That will go look into your migrations folder and find each of those migration files and run their up functions, one after another. 
if you're interested in undoing those changes, you'd run SQLize DB migrate undo. And that will, un that will run the most recent down function one at a time, so you can continue calling them. Here's an example. Uh, just as I mentioned earlier, uh, you might be interested in adding a column. Uh, the way that you would uh, structure your up function is you'd call the add column method off of the query interface object. You'd name the table that you're interested in adding column, a column to. You'd name that column as its second parameter, and then describe what kind of data type it would be. Uh, and it, it's important that your down function directly undoes what your up function does. Uh, and so in this case, we would be removing a column, naming that table, naming the column we're trying to remove. Here's another example. Uh, if you'd like to just simply rename a column, you could say, I want to rename the column in my person table called signature, and I'd like, like to rename it to sig. And your down function would say, hey, take that uh, sig column in my person table and rename name it back to what I originally had it in this case, which was signature. There are a lot of other migration scripts uh, that I'm not going to get into just yet, but one of, uh, one of those scripts that might be of interest to you as well is model create. One, uh, one of the powers of the SQLize command line interface is you can go ahead and define models right from your command line. Uh, you would go ahead and name that model, uh, describe its data types from the command line, and what SQLize uh, command line interface will do is it will go ahead and find your models directory and go ahead and build your model for you. Um, and that's a really powerful uh, tool. The seed create is similar. It, it could create a seed file for you. Um, I encourage you to take a look uh, at some of these other tools uh, and, and some of these other commands as well. Um, and lastly, I've uh, listed a few resources that I find, found helpful as I was learning about SQLized migrations. Um, that's about it. So thank you for listening. Take care. Uh...